Welcome back, my fellow makers and phone fanatics. In today's episode, we're going to be making a Battle Sister Dagger right here on the Evil Ted channel. Let's start by putting our patterns together. Taking the straight edge onto page one and cutting the registration marks with a craft knife. Then line them up with the registration marks on page two and tape them together. Now we're gonna take some poster board and spray glue and spray them lightly on the pattern and the poster board. Apply them together. This step is not necessary, but for me personally, I like having the patterns on the poster board, which makes it a lot easier to trace onto foam. Now that everything's securely mounted on the poster board, let's start cutting with a straight edge and craft knife. Let's start with the hilt of the dagger. To cut out the length of the blade, let's get a longer straight edge. We're going to cut from the blade all the way to the handle. Now our dagger pattern is completely cut out. Let's move on to the hilt. On the top of the inside of the hilt where it's square, we're gonna cut it out with a craft knife. And we do the same on the bottom edge, keeping it square, making sure it's the same length as the handle. Let's trace our pattern onto 10 millimeter foam. Hold them in place with my one, two, three blocks. Now with our utility knife, we're going to cut out the dagger at 90 degree angles. As soon as you feel the utility knife start to drag, be sure to resharpen it using your Crenshaw sharpener. Where there's tighter curves and smaller areas, I like to use my craft knife. Now we're going to place our fiberglass rod in the center of our dagger. Trace it and make our registration marks with a straight edge. With a stone bit and rotary tool, we're going to grind out a trench for our rod. Glue in the fiberglass rod with some super glue. Then we're going to take a piece of 10 millimeter foam, placing our dagger with the fiberglass rod on the top, pressing down firmly to make an impression on the foam. Once you lift up the dagger, make a mark where you see the impressions in the foam using a ballpoint pen. Then connect the lines using a straight edge. Then proceed to grind a trench using the rotary tool and stone bit. Do a test fit to make sure it sits nice and flush. Then trace the edges for your registration marks. Then apply a thin coat of contact cement on both sides. Let dry. Carefully line them up on the registration marks and apply pressure. Use a utility knife, trim the edges at 90 degree angles. Again, use the craft knife for tighter spots. Now with the rotary tool and stone bit, we're gonna make sure our edges are nice and level. Now that the edges are clean and level, I'm gonna take the pattern and cut our registration marks for the beveled edge of the dagger. Plus the rib details on our handle. To cut out the handle, we're going to use the band saw. To add the side grooves on the handle, we're going to use a machine square and a sharpie. 
With the pattern, we're going to add the back of the handle line detail. With the wood burner, I'm going to burn in the detail, which will make it a lot easier to follow when using the stone bit. Let us not forget about the hilt. I'm gonna cut it out at 10 millimeter foam, 90 degree angle. Moving on to the downdraft table. We're gonna use a rotary tool and a sanding drum to bevel our dagger edges. For cleanup work, I'd like to go back to the stone bit to make the edges a little bit sharper and cleaner. This also gets rid of the groove lines from the sanding drum. Now we're gonna switch over to the tapered stone bit. We're carving the details into the handle. Now switching over to the bigger tapered bit to add additional details and soften up the handle. Now we're done with the rotary tool. We're gonna to place the dagger on the edge of the table with our 220 sanding stick to go back over the edges. This really helps the bevel stay flat and help keeps the edges smooth. Put down my heat board and proceed to heat seal the dagger. Now we move on to the hilt, soften the edges with a stone bit. Using our utility knife, we're going to cut the top of the hilt right to the edge. This will allow us to attach the hilt to the dagger. Apply contact cement to the inside of the hilt and onto the dagger itself. Be sure to put them together while the glue is still wet. I use a straight pen to hold it in place while the glue dries. Now it's dry, remove the straight pen and press around the edges to make sure you have good contact. Perfect. The dagger is looking great. Now to apply rapid fill. I like using a stiff bristle Mod Podge brush. Oops, I forgot to add the two millimeter foam detail on the back of the handle. Apply contact cement. Speed up the drying with a hair dryer. Now apply the two millimeter foam center of the back of the handle and then wrap it down around the edges. back to the rapid fill. I like using two coats of rapid fill. Let the first coat dry completely before adding the second coat. Now that both coats of rapid fill are dry, let's start sanding with our 220 sanding sponge. I can see that my sweaty hands are leaving marks on the dagger, so I'm gonna put on some rubber gloves and get back to sanding. Now we're going to shape up the bird head of the handle by using some foam clay. Be sure to wet the foam first. I find it helps the foam clay stick a lot better. Using wet fingers, you can smooth out the foam clay, making the edges almost seamless. Now the bird head is done. Let's let it dry for at least eight hours. All right, the head is dry. There's some wrinkles on the brow I'm not crazy about, so I'm gonna fill in the wrinkles using some gap filler. Yeah, now I look at it, I can see the beak looks a little rough, so we're gonna go ahead and add some rapid fill to that as well. Let it dry. And then sand it. Now I'm going to insert baling wire into the handle. And let's move over to the spray booth. Hang it up and seal it with black plastic dip. Now the dagger is completely dry. I end up using four coats of plastic dip. 
remove the wire hanger and patch the holes with gap filler. You can smooth it out with a wet finger. To help it blend in, I'm gonna put a thin coat of black Platifex paint over the gap filler. The color I picked for the dagger is Platifex Gold Coin. Let's lay down some paper. To add the fur de lis detail on our dagger, I got a silicone mold and cast up two of them out of casting resin. Attach them to the hilt using super glue. To use Platifex paint in an airbrush, you need to thin it down with some window cleaner. I'm gonna mix it up really good here with a tongue depressor. Now let's base it out with some black paint. When using metallic paints, I find for the best results is to work with a black base. Now applying our gold color. For the best finish, you need to apply multiple thin coats, especially when using metallic paints. The gold is looking really good, nice and even. With the paintbrush, we're going to paint black on our grip of the dagger. The gold looks great. I was originally gonna keep the entire dagger gold, but the more I look at it, I think the bevel edges should be a different color. So we're gonna mask off the edges using Tamiya tape. To mask out the center of the dagger, we're going to use the template, which I trimmed down a little bit smaller. We're gonna lay down some frog tape onto the cutting mat. Trace the pattern onto it. and cut it out with a craft knife. Carefully peel it up, apply it to the dagger. Now let's mask off the rest of the dagger with frog tape and saran wrap. Again, lay down a black base on the edge. For the edge of our blade, we're going to use Platifex Samurai Dark Metallic. Now for my favorite part. Demasking. Make sure when you're demasking, take the tape off slowly and carefully. The dagger's looking really good. You can see the beveled color better when you move it in the light. Now it's time for aging with some black, burnt sienna, and brown oil paint. I like to put a little bit of each color onto a piece of Sintra, then very carefully mix them together. Apply the oil paint in the cracks and crevices. Then going back in with a dry brush to create a little bit of a fade. And then using a paper towel, you can wipe off the excess. Yeah, this is looking really good. Our sister of battle dagger is complete. Everything I used on this build is listed below the video. If this is your first time watching my video, please don't forget to subscribe. While you're at it, jump over to my website, evoltedsmith.com, where you can get on my mailing list and I have numerous patterns for sale. And if you guys like these things, please leave comments below. Uh, and if you guys end up working and making your own dagger, please tag me on all social media. If you guys are a 40K fan, like my friend Iron Warrior Cosplay is, this is one of many props I'll be making in the 40K universe. Stay tuned and I'll catch you back next time right here on the Evil Tech channel.